Hey friends, so Astro 2.0 was recently released and is jam-packed with a lot of awesome features. But in this video, we're gonna specifically look deeper into content collections and how they help us to better organize our content and how they also provide type safety for our Markdown and MDX files. Now, if you're anything like me, you may be wondering, why do I need type safety for Markdown and MDX files? I thought it sounded a bit strange at first too, but until I saw it in action and started playing around with this feature, now I think it's a complete game changer and you're really gonna love it and appreciate it. So here are some of the things that we're gonna cover in this video. First, we're gonna learn how to create a brand new Astro 2.0 project. Then we're gonna learn how to create a content collection, which in our case will be for a blog. Then we'll learn how to define a collection schema. And this is what Astro will use to validate all the content and data in our markdown files especially the front matter. And this is also what provides that type safety like I mentioned earlier. And then finally, we will learn how to query this content collection so we can render out all of our blog posts and also how to dynamically generate routes for every post in our collection. So that's a lot of stuff that we have to get to uncover. So let's jump right in. So I'm currently on the content collections docs page as I wanna briefly discuss how they work before we dive into the code. So a content collection is any directory located within the source content directory. This is a special directory that is reserved in Astro 2.0. In this tutorial, we will be creating a blog content collection like we have right here. The content for each collection can either be in a markdown file or an MDX file. You can have multiple collections, but for the sake of this tutorial, we will only be creating one. So after creating a collection, we need to define a collection schema. And this is what lets Astro know about all the data and types located within our Markdown or MDX files, especially the front matter. And this is what Astro will use to, to be able to validate and provide type safety for our content. And then next, we can query our content collection to render the data in our Astro components and pages. And then finally, we can generate dynamic routes for each piece of content. In our case, we will learn how to generate dynamic routes for every one of our blog posts. So now that we have a better understanding of content collections, let's create a new Astro 2.0 project. Let's create a new Astro 2.0 project by entering the following command in our terminal. npm create astro at latest. And so then we need to give our project a name, which I'll call it Astro Content Collections and then select a few best practices, and then hit yes to install NPM dependencies. And then would you like to initialize a new Git repository? I'm gonna select no, but you can if you want. And then select strict for the type of TypeScript we want. And so now that our project has been created, we need to CD into our project directory. And then next we can start the dev server by typing npm run dev. Then if we open our browser to localhost 3000, we will see our new Astro project. So now that we've created our project, let's learn how to create our blog content collection. The first thing we need to do is to create a folder called content inside of the source folder. Next, within the content folder, we need to create a folder for our content collection which in our case is called blog. Now we need to add some blog posts to our collection. I'm gonna copy and paste the examples from the written tutorial below. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, the link to the written tutorial is in the description below the video. So now that we've got our blog posts, I wanna just quickly go over some of the properties in our front matter. So we have a, our title, we have an author, we have an is draft, which will determine whether or not this is a draft post, the publish date, then we have some tags, then we have an image for our post, and then we have the canonical URL. Now that we have our blog content collection and some posts, we need to define the blog collection schema. This is what Astro will use to validate our blog content and ensure type safety. Create a new file inside of source content called config.ts. Next, I'm gonna paste in the entire contents of this file and then walk you through it line by line. First, we are importing the Z object and the define collection function from Astro content. The Z object is the Zod library and the define collection function is a special function provided by Astro, which allows us to configure a content collection. 
Next, we create a constant called blog collection and set it equal to the define collection function. We are passing the define collection function an object that contains our schema. The schema is a Zod object which contains all of the properties and data from our blog post's front matter. The title is of type string. The author is also of type string. Is draft is a Boolean type. Publish date is of type string, but notice how we are also using the transform function from Zod to turn our date string into a JavaScript date object. Tags is an array of strings. Image is of type string, but it is also optional. Everything in Zod is required by default. You have to explicitly tell it when something is optional. The canonical URL is of type string, but not just any string, it has to be of type URL. Finally, we export our blog collection schema. Now that our schema has been defined, we can learn how to query our blog collection and render each post on the home page. Let's update our home page to render our blog posts. The first thing we need to do is import a function called get collection from Astro content like so. Next, we can await this function and pass it in the name of our content collection, which in our case is blog. Then we can render the blog post variable out to the page. If we open up our browser, you will see that we're getting an error. It looks like our scheme validation is working. The error states that the publish date is required, but our front matter has published date. Hopefully you can now begin to see how powerful and useful having a type safe front matter is. And we can solve this by updating our config.ts like so. Instead of published date, it needs to say published date. Now if we check our browser, we can see the blog post rendered on the home page. To properly render the blog content, we need to map over the blog posts contained within our collection. So here we're mapping over our blog post and then we're generating an H2. And then within the H2, we have an anchor tag that's linking to our blog post. And then we're using the post title as the name of our link. So now if we open our browser and refresh the page, we can see that each blog post title is rendered as a link. If we click on one of the links, we will get a 404 page. This is because we have not told Astro to generate a dynamic route for each of our posts. So let's do that now. Now that we have our blog posts on the home page, we need to tell Astro how to generate a route for every post with dynamic routes. First, create a folder called blog inside of the source pages directory. Inside this newly created folder, create a file called slug.astro. So I will paste in the entire contents of this file and then I'll break it down line by line. First, we are importing the get collection function from Astro content. We learned about this function in the previous section where we learned how to query for our blog collection content. Next, we are exporting an async function called get static paths, which Astro provides. This function is what Astro uses to generate dynamic routes. Inside get static paths, we await the get collection function, which returns all of the posts from the blog content collection. Then we use .map to iterate over the blog posts, returning an object with two properties. The first is a params property, which contains the slug of our blog post. Astro expects the slug from each post, since we named this file slug.astro. By default, Astro will use the file name of each post for the slug. The second property, props, returns each blog post's content. And finally, we get the data returned from the getStaticPaths function and render the blog content using a special content component provided by Astro. Now if you visit localhost 3000 and click on one of the blog post titles, you should see the post content. Well friends, we covered a lot of material in this video, so let's quickly recap what you learned in this tutorial. First, we briefly discuss what content collections are, how they help us better organize our content while providing type safety for our Markdown and MDX files. Then we learned how to create a new Astro 2.0 project. Next, we learned how to define a collection schema for our blog content collection. Then we learned how to query the blog content collection to render each blog post onto the homepage. And finally, we learned how to create dynamic routes for each blog post. 
To find out more about content collections and all the other awesome features in Astro 2.0, make sure to check out Astro's Docs.